We will get started in just about 60 seconds, letting the room fill up. The chat has already started with our signature question, uh, where are you coming in from? You can add what the weather is. Um, I'm seeing Massachusetts, uh, Washington, D.C., just down the road from me. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I'm Dan. I'm actually not in D.C. I'm actually in Columbia, Maryland, which is between Baltimore and D.C. So I, um, oh, and we have Crystal. Yay, Crystal. Who else is with you, uh, Crystal? And Samantha. Awesome. Good to see you. Uh, kind of gray here. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Um, okay, Florida. Like, uh, tell me a little bit about that, Emily. Emily's on too. Awesome. David, cool. Good to see you, Julie. Rose, Carolyn. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. We're hitting the 12 o'clock hour. I'm just going to get started with a few a little items here and then um, and we'll get into the content and um, love seeing all these folks coming in. Oh, we got a California. That is too awesome. Thank you. Hey, Mike for PRSA. Awesome. So guys, um, today we're going to talk about pivoting your chapter leadership conference to virtual and um, super excited about this in large part because we got a couple of case studies that's right that's right some of the people in the community have already done this in one flavor or the other and so we're going to give you some content at the front end and then we are going to go ahead and shift ourselves to actually how you can do this i mean the reality is, is that even as the world begins to open back up again in the coming months, the one question that we're going to continue remain on our minds is, what now? Because the, the world's going to open up, but all the face-to-face -face meetings are not going to resume right away. And then there's going to be all kinds of physical distancing things in place. How do we continue to train prepare and support our volunteer leaders during this time. Well, I think what we have to understand, and I don't know how many of you are also ASAE members and just saw the press release come out that they have decided that all learning and meeting events will be virtual through the end of this year. I think we're coming to understand that we're going to have to do this pivot. And I have a um, trainer, uh, I love my trainer, and he told us when he reopened this week, he said some of the words that he refuses to hear are new normal, next normal, when we get back to normal, or the word pivot. So we're violating his uh, training protocol by using the word pivoting here. But to me, it is a word that really helps us understand that it is and this incredibly fun shift if we're good about it. So I want to get make sure that we are, Peggy, your video is as big as a slide deck on my screen. Okay. Um, sorry, I caught that as a, as a, as a thing. Um, try to, I'm going to ask, uh, Sarah's always with me from Bill Highway. I don't know if there's a setting on the actual um, Zoom here that would make a difference. Um, however, um, maybe we can figure this out. Let's try this. Um, as I do a little bit of this work, I would like you to get on the chat what's on your desk or your modified desk that makes you um, makes you smile. All right, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to see if I can adjust the screen. There we go. See if that works. Um, give me some hints in there. Um, and I've got Pictures of my cat, a painted stone, an agate collection, my cat, I love it. Stash of M&Ms, okay, that is awesome. Coolness, breakfast cereal, cool. You guys keep coming in here. Obviously today is um, bought, brought to you by Bill Highway and uh, the lovely Sarah is our backup here on working with us on all kinds of things. You know them, I hope, but um, if you've got chapters, they've got solutions, they've got a really incredible set of tools that your chapters can use to automate and simplify operations. And of course, Peter's not with us today, but he's always with us as Mariner, um, as he and, and I at Mariner really wish to help you and your chapters uh, get done what you need to get done. Um, 
um, it, I want to also just give a huge thank you because this particular program, as our, as our virtual workshop last month and as part of our CEX last year, we have an incredible partner who is really making a difference for us. They are a, as many of you may know, that they are an incredible technology company in our space. There are techies that make a difference around communities. They have quite a few um, uh, technology examples, including some, an LMS and some event technology. Yes, virtual event technology too. Love the fact that they have, um, They've, um, they've helped us help us get our workshop virtual and will continue to be a huge support for us. So it's awesome to have them as partners in this. Now you know that this webinar is part of a whole commitment to a shared purpose, to build the community and create this connections. And what we do is we listen, curate, and package them into webinars. Um, but really, guys, we are tapping into you constantly to make sure this is something that will work <coughs> as a community to help you. Today's agenda is very simple, three things. Going virtual, tips and info that we think will, you, that will be useful to you. Those who went virtual, some associations will show the way. And we're going to finish up with some resources. Now, Slides here are packed with information and ideas. Two are just on resources. We're not going to read all of those things. You will, of course, get all of this later. I want to start, though, by kind of getting a level set for me here and having a good understanding of what, of what you guys are doing right now. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and launch a poll for us. And I want to find out, um, really, what type of event are you trying to convert to virtual right now? It's a multiple choice answer. Are you looking at that full or multi-day leadership conference? Maybe you had something that was traditionally less than a full day and you're trying to convert that. Maybe you were doing a one day, as one group I talked to, a full day of officer training. Then there was an incredible a group that had a, a full day of ED training. So just tell me what it is you're trying to convert here. I got a lot of answers coming in. I love the fact that you guys are so familiar with this kind of technology that you can just jump right in and play with me here. Um, it's, and it's really interesting as I'm watching some of these polls come in, I'm seeing that of course the lion's share of you are here because you're looking at that conversion of a full or a multi-day leadership conference. But I think that officer training is a huge piece and we got a couple of workshops. It looks like the popcorn has slowed down just a little bit. I'm going to end the polling and share the results with you. So you can see that many of you here are looking for that. How do I convert the full or the multi-day leadership conference? So um, the examples that we've got are going come from that kind of a pivot, but they're applicable to all of the other, um, all of the other elements. I got one more poll that I want to share. I want to, I want to check in with you. This one is, and let me, let me pull this one up for me. This one is, I am curious to know um, what you already offer chapter leaders or chapter staff virtually. So what kinds of things are you already um, offering? So is it maybe orientations through tools or videos, skill training through webinars training? Maybe there's a leadership conference that could be already virtual, right? Webinars on key topics. Maybe it's a resource portal. Um, I know a lot of folks are offering an online community for leaders. So I just want to get a sense of what do you already have? Because we can build on what we have. And I think it's really valuable for us to remember that we are doing some incredible things in the virtual space. So um, lots of things coming in. Of course, webinars on key topics and resource portal and online community are vying for the, the front of the, of the list here. Um, uh, and I'm really interesting to see the leadership conference. Some people are already doing that virtual. So I want to hear from you guys in the chat. If you put other in this poll or the last poll, you know our rule, right? Which is to get into that chat and go ahead and put others. So like Jenny said, I put other because we had our full leadership in person and I'm not sure about Q1 of 2021, but likely you will be, huh? And I, I love Lisa. She says that they're doing a share every two to three weeks via a video meetings. And yes, Crystal, you have done some incredible um, five to 10 minute videos. All right, let me end the polling and show you what we've got. Um, so 
not surprisingly, webinars is the first thing you do. So you know you can take those webinars and multi-purpose them as part of your leadership conference. That's right. That's one of the ideas that we have heard and we have seen successfully. All right, guys, let's, let's move along. What I want to do is to start by giving you uh, sort of giving us the process, the six, the six steps or the six areas that we should think through. And I want to, and I want to make sure that we start this a framework. And then I'm going to bring on some folks who are going to share a little bit of their story after I have sort of laid the groundwork for them. We have to start with the content and, and it's really critical that you develop those learning objectives and then you match the activities that will best help you apply those um, the, the learning objectives. So what I'm talking about here is, is that in some cases, the activity may be more collaborative or problem solving. In some cases, it's about hearing from an expert. Don't assume that everything is going to be one way or the other. The learning objectives should drive the, um, the, the, should drive the activities. Make sure no matter what you do that you are in fact building in that interactivity, not just talking on the screen. The polls are something that we've done before. And CAI, uh, the Community Association Institute, is going to share through their case study a few other ideas. Um, and I, whoops. And I think the other really important thing is to think engaging participants every four minutes. So think about them, think about how you can bring people into the conversation. The, the caveat to this, and I love Tom Singer, he did an incredible post, um, and what he said was, don't replicate the in-person experience. You know, it, it, it's easy for us to say, well, we did this and we had two breakouts and we did this and we did this, we're going to bring it right online. Well, the reality is, is that doing a talking head webinar broadcast is not going to work if you want a learning objective where there's some collaborative learning involved in it. So get a little outside the format a little bit. Three common mistakes I want you to avoid as you're thinking through this part of the process. The format error. This is where you simply convert an interactive instructor-led classroom program to a webcast. You take a session that is designed for um, a lot of group discussion and you say, oh, we're just going to do the slides. Mm -mm. Or you're thinking in terms of eight hours in person equals eight hours virtual. And actually, there's not a minute to minute there. And in fact, you really have to understand that it takes more, it takes longer. So therefore, if you wanna do eight hours of content, you have to have uh, longer than an eight hour process. The other thing is um, more is more. What do we mean by that? Um, more slides. You notice that we do this. We do this with building. And people laugh when I send the webinar. Sometimes for some of the leadership training I'll do, and I'll say, okay, I'm doing a webinar. And I'll send them a deck with 60. I go, Peggy, it's too many slides. No. In fact, the rule of thumb more and more is one slide per minute. So give us a change. All right. So you got the content. Obviously, you have to figure out where the technology fits in because I have the content. I know the activities. Now, what's going to help me do that? And then that may cause you to go back and do some course correction, which is completely fine. The big thing I want to mention to you is do not assume that everybody knows the technology. Um, I, I, we, this is a big mistake that we do and we don't build in enough time. And we talk a little bit about that through one of our case studies. One of the things on, I've talked to two other people on, uh, as I was preparing for the case studies, and I know for, in the case of, of the work I just did, um, being part of the team with CAI, is if you're in a crunch, and some of us are in a crunch because we're pivoting quickly, don't try to learn a software. Use what you know, unless you have time to do that learning. Tie it back to your online community. Take a technology that people know. Maybe they don't, they know it, but they don't use it, right? But take a technology that's, that's been available to your folks and build that into it. In some cases, if you've got one platform that everybody knows, you might want to think about augmenting that platform. In other words, um, one group that I'm working with um, has a learning management system that drives most of their intense learning, and they want to use that for piece of it. So it doesn't have the same interactivity. So we're blending some playmats. But it's also about bringing in apps, a good meeting app, or, 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 or a um, or, yeah, meeting app. It could be using surveys, 
quizzes, whiteboards, even Facebook Live. One group I know they did all of their happy hours on Facebook Live. So they left the Zoom world and went over to Facebook Live. Um, I, and you know, you can, if you embed your, um, your um, uh, polling into your slides, you can bring in poll everywhere. So Zoom is a little limited when it comes to, if Zoom is your platform, it's a little limited for polling, right? It's multiple choice or single choice. But let's say you wanna build a world, word cloud. Well, just embed that into your, um, your PowerPoint. So there's lots of ways to really augment that. Now, the critical thing is, is to have a tech rehearsal. So one of the neat things that we did with CAI is we had, we, we just played like it was real and we had, we even wore our shirts and everything, right? Have that tech rehearsal so you know. Now, one of the things that the cool, the cool folks from CAI did is they, um, they brought in staff so they could check tests, they could test the breakout rooms in Zoom. Um, and they had a lot of fun and they had some good conversation. You can really, I mean, you could just have a load of fun if you think to yourself, if you give yourself that moment or that time. Now, one of the things about, I think, tech goals is that um, we may default to something everybody else is using. And I, and I don't really want you to do that. I want you to really think about the learning and the experience goal before choosing the technology. And what do I mean by that is, is the event content driven or conversation driven? If it is content driven, a learning management system with a Facebook Live for the social part, could be exactly the tech, the tech that you need. If it's conversation driven, you have to have access to putting people in some small breakout rooms. So, so think about that and then understand the tech. Also understand that the number of attendees and the length of the meeting is going to drive where you're gonna do in terms of your, of your technology. And I think that gets us to a really important point about getting beyond Zoom. I love Zoom. Bill Highway loves Zoom. We just did a very cool um, workshop last month on Zoom. CAI use Zoom. But there is GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar, there's Adobe Connect, there's your learning management systems, um, Freestone, for example, through um, community brands. There's fun things like House Party, you, Microsoft Teams. If you're doing a, let's say you're, let's go back to just a moment to that. Um, that officer training or the um, or the CED tra the chapter exec training, you know, you can do a small meeting in, in teams and have a channel, right? So get outside the box. Say to yourself, what's the learning and experience goal? Match the technology to that. Um, a little side. I want to go a little a little side point on um, on um, the tech goals. Um, we have learned some lessons about Zoom meetings versus webinars. So I'm just curious if you know the difference. So put in the chat, do you know the difference between Zoom meetings and Zoom webinars? Go ahead, folks, get it in there, get it in there. Um, oh, I love it. Someone just said they were talking about, you know, and we had this problem with PRSA. Um, some of our, we have a lot of government members and they could not use Zoom for a while. So we reminded them they could get on their personal devices. So also think about that. So think about the technology from the user's perspective and access to that. Thank you for the folks bringing that up. Okay, you are, I love Shelfie, I love you. I think I know, all right. So let's give you a sort of a pseudo little quiz. Meetings have breakout rooms, reactions and nonverbal uh, feedback icons, and you can, everybody's on video and you can do file transfers. How many of those things did you know meetings had? Let's see, I'm listening, I'm looking for this. Three, all of them. Okay, there's some smart folks, there's some smart folks. Now, let me ask this question of the group. Which of these elements are not available in webinars? Anybody know what is not available in webinars? Three out of four, I love it, I love it. That's correct, yes, and yes, Liz, yes, yes. All right, all right, anything else? Okay, keep it coming in there, correct. Yes, Ashley, you're right, you're right, yes. All right, so we got some smart people. Let me share with you that, yes, the webinars um, do allow uh, email reminders for registration, PayPal integration, and Q&A. They do not allow breakout rooms. They do not have reactions and nonverbal feedback icons, and only the 
only the host and panelists are on video and there's no file sharing. So, I mean, there, yes, in, in the webinar, no file sharing. So there are differences. Meetings do not have PayPal integration. Meetings do not send out email reminders and meetings don't have any plus. So here's the reason why I bring this out is because if you need breakout rooms, you're not gonna do go to webinar. If you can't handle registration someplace else and it's, and it's more about content driven, you're not gonna choose meetings. This is a simple example of Zoom meetings versus webinars, but every technology team, ha every technology has its pros and cons. That's why I don't want you to start with the technology. Okay, cool beans, all righty. A virtual team of event. So critical element in this technology question is do not go it alone. Every successful has a virtual host or MC. One of the things that um, AFP found in their big conference when they did it was this virtual host MC made all the difference. The weave, when they had one technical glitch, the host was there to make sure that this, it was smooth. Technology point person. CAI, oh my gosh, did this in, in spades. Um, incredible, the, the technology point person had everything under control the entire time. As the virtual host, I was able to just smoothly go through the day. Chat moderator, so Sarah's my chat moderator. I love it, she's already answered a couple of questions. She's put in a couple of really great links. I get to look over here, you see me looking away from the camera, right? I get to look over here and um, be able to um, watch the chat, but you have the chat moderator and have breakout room leaders. Now, the other aspect of this, a huge part of this team is clearly going to be your speaker. So how are you prepping them? Because it's important that you view them as a part of the team and you put as much energy and effort in helping them with the technology as you do with the content. So my recommendation is yet you think about giving them live or pre-recorded webinar on, 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 a, on adult learning best practices. You encourage the use of audience and interactivity tools and you demand it where you can, right? And you teach them how to do that. Um, I would put them on the event platform before you go at this thing and be able to, um, you know, by putting them on before they get a lay of the land. I have been on all both the go-tos, I've been on a couple of LMSs, I've been on Zoom, and I've been on Adobe Connect. Everyone's a little bit different. When I have a good technology person and they get me on, I, they do a dry run front, I will find some out really cool things and I can change my content based on what you can give me. The practice run also addresses things like uh, weak Wi-Fi, poor quality sound, webcam placement, bad lighting, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and then I think it's really important that you sign on early for an AV test. So build, and then the other last part about the technology is I want you to talk about building into the start of any event, a technology overview. Now we didn't do it here simply because quite frankly, you guys know what you're doing here, but open the meeting early for those who want to get a tour of the technology, check out their settings is critical. It's a, it's a best practice that CAI did. They also held two days before the event, a two hour login anytime you want during that time frame to check out the platform if you didn't already know it. I just, I just think that if, if you really want to set yourself up for success when we're talking about the technology part of this, take out as many of the surprises and questions as you possibly can, right? Take out as many as you can. Um, now, <laughs> I have to tell you, there's going to be an announcement at the end of this. Um, Bill Highway, Mariner, we have been on the search. We've been looking at a lot of these things, and we have a couple of lessons learned. And I would say that poor Sarah has learned these lessons maybe more than us of us. But I think it's really a, an, an incredible, um, uh, um, incredible journey that we've been on, right? So it doesn't, you know, obviously do your homework. One of the things that we have found, because there's so much new coming onto the marketplace, dozens of virtual platforms are hankering for the business right now. So um, ask how long they've been around, ask what functionality is live versus beta versus under development, because they're not always clear about that, guys. We looked at a platform that we really love, but guess what? We'll be potentially, the stuff we want to do could be fresh out of the gate. Um, and so I just think it's worth us doing that homework. But the big thing is, what's the user base? Okay, poll time, because I want to find out, um, now that I've given you um, a bunch of things, let's see. Um, mm -hmm. 
Hang on a second, guys. I need to. Did I not stop that? Sorry, I got that, that guys. Sarah usually does this part for me, but we had a little bit of a glitch, so I'm doing it. And um, and I always say to her, I'm so good. All right. What technology are you using or planning to use? So tell us what is in your on your mind right now in terms of how you're going to pivot these things. Um, and I'm just reading this. We had a coffee and colleague session to kick off the one day conference. That's awesome. Joins my husband with a picture of everyone holding on their call. Oh my gosh, I love that. That is so good. Oh, of course, I should have put Cisco WebEx on there. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. Um, so um, that's an other, right? Yes, keep going. All right, so I'm seeing folks coming in here. Good. So <coughs> let me grab some water here for me. So far, Zoom is a popular one. We got go to meeting webinar. Hey, I love that question, Karen. Let's see if anybody else knows. Does WebEx have they expand the number of videos you can have going at once? It used to be six to nine. I was just on it and I honestly do not remember what the answer to that is. Hub for your annual meeting chapters like we use Zoom. Okay, all right. So I see some popcorn is kind of has slowed down here. So let me show this, share results. Here we go. So um, obviously most of us are using Zoom. Um, Zoom has got the hugest, uh, hugest, is that even a word? One of the largest user bases. And um, I think that that, and, and they're constantly upgrading. I had to up, upgrade something today. Um, nobody's using Remo, that's relatively new. I love whoever's using Hop In, please jump in on the chat and tell us about that, okay? Um, because I think that's a really possibility. And of course, LMS, if you've got one and it fits into your team, let's go with it, right? All right. Let's move on here now to three, the experience. Um, I want you to make sure you're thinking about engagement and interactivity. I, I love this. Oh, I wanted to do this. There was a great um, article, I'm gonna send it to you. They said, in your shift to virtual, think cinematic, right? Um, think, think big, think, um, just think the big screen and think about how do I enrich that experience, right? So a really cool rule of thumb is to think about how are you engaging and every four minutes, it's a poll, it's a chat question. It's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, if you're on meetings, it's an, it's a um, reactions. Um, add the tactile. We're going to talk at the CAI. They did an incredible bingo card and they had some swag. So go ahead, have some fun with that. Give the white space. I was on a really wonderful um, uh, webinar, two, three hour webinar. And several times during that day, she gave us, she, she gave us um, white space where we had an opportunity to just take our time to, <coughs> excuse me, take our time to reflect, give reflection time. And of course, allowing listening, talking, chatting, polling, individual reflection. So build that in. Um, I want you to build in the breaks. The rule is 50, 10, 90, 15. So for 50 minute, for a 60 minute um, webinar, 50 minutes with a 10 minute, with a, with a um, 10 minute break. Now I'm gonna violate that rule because we only have 60 minutes, but in general, if you are trying to do a multi-hour, I want you to think in terms of how can I build in opportunities. All right. Um, these are just some ideas for how to use the technology for that interactivity. Um, one of the really cool things that we did um, um, before, and I'm just going to go here. Do you guys see my background? Give me a thumbs up or in the, in the chat if you do. So I got the whole crowd from CEX last year right here. Excellent. And um, I changed that background, right? So here's the really cool thing with CAI. They gave us a beach background because it's a beach theme and I had a beach behind me. But at happy hour, we switched our backgrounds to a sunset on the beach. How cool is that? 
Yeah. So use the background. Um, I did an event where I asked everybody to take their name and make it their super their 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 who they who their superhero was, who they were. Um, another time we had them we had them vote. Like, oh, that's a four on a, out of five scale. That's three stars out of four. So have some fun with that. Um, all right. So um, just go ahead. If you are not on an Apple machine, go ahead and um, spice up the chat a little bit by um, sharing, sharing a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I'm going to let's see if you guys can do this. Oh, I want to hear more about the call for member talent and be playing them during the breaks. I totally love that. A DJ playing during break between the end of sessions. That is too awesome. Great ideas. All right. I'm going to look for that chat. All right. Um, we did create a first timers video. I think that this is still a useful, even though it's virtual, help people understand um, what they're doing and create a rules of engagement. This is one that we use to steal it change it up. Um, our big thing was to make sure in this particular case that we knew there's going to be some unfamiliar technology and um, we also knew things were going to be out of the control. So we really wanted to make sure people knew that. Um, don't hesitate um, to add some virtual games. I'm going to throw some things up here and you guys can take a look at any of these. We have a really incredible um, blog post that has all of these in here. Um, a couple of just different ideas about how you can bring in the engagement games. One of the things that's not on here that we did was a scavenger hunt. Gave them, um, we were talking about leadership and we said, take the, um, take, take, the, um, uh, take the learnings, go out to your house, find an item that represents your leadership style and one that represents the leader that you're working with. And then into breakout rooms, talk about the strengths of, of each of those styles. So it was a game that applied the learning that, that got to conversation. Um, and you can also add, and this is where I get to show and tell, swag. So um, uh, we have discovered swag up and totally love it. Um, but I want to show you the swag package. So CAI sent this to everybody. Look at that bright blue. It's a beach theme, right? In that had, oh, ho, ho, the signature sunglasses and an applause. That's right. And we used both of these items. Bright ideas. Put your glasses on. Give everybody a round of applause. Now, what's really cool is I don't know if you can see on this. It's going to be hard. Don't worry about it. That's the sponsor's name. So our swag boxes, our swag bags, which added the tactile uh, aspect, actually tied into a sponsorship. Um, but I also love this example of raffles from Rally Up. And then we've got um, social uh, social quiz uh, quiz. To, Quiz dancing, I know I can say that, um, which is a really cool um, idea. And then of course, quizzes from Kahoot. So all of those things are really awesome. So um, I have to admit that I um, forgot that this next slide was coming up, so I already told you the story, but here you go. Take a look at that cool group, Woohoo! This is the beginning of our day. We were just getting ready. We're waiting for the folks to come in. It was beach day and we had loads and loads of fun. All right. <laughs> there are so many ways that you can think about mixing up your virtual training to take it beyond just the learning part of it. Whether it's a virtual campfire, if it's a white virtual white elephant exchange using the Trello, or maybe it's just creating a series of cows chats, I want you to think about how can I do things differently. So, how have you engaged, or how are you planning to engage participants virtually? Now, I see a number of people have written it in, but let's fill the chat because you know we always share the chat back fill the chat with ways that you have engaged people and and ways ways to engage people or are going to engage people um 
Wow. Um, they were saying that they had a the fulfillment center mail the packages. That's awesome. Swag up will mail them for you or they will send them to your fulfillment center. That's awesome. Um, so put it in there. What are you going to do? How are you going to change things up? New member orientations with virtual happy hours. Cool beans. Tell us a little bit more. Like, what are you going to do with that virtual happy hour, Rachel? Yeah, t tell us because one of the interesting things with the virtual happy hours, um, we asked this question of uh, on the CAI happy hour afterwards. I didn't even capture all of the cool ideas, which I wish I had. But they had, um, you know, a local bartender did a um, did a uh, how to make a basically how to make a um, a stay at home cocktail with whatever you've got. So did a fun thing with that. Um, we had someone else do a, um, like a bingo, we, all kinds of things. So tell us about how you're doing this. Keep the chats going as I switch to format. Just a couple of points here that I want you to think about. Okay. The mantra is the sky's the limit. So I want you to be completely um, open to the options. I want you to understand that you do not have to tie yourself to traditional time blocks. Um, I think that the most important thing is that you think about starting and ending on time. So what is your box and how can I mix things up? Um, one person in an article I recently read referred to it this way. She said, your virtual event is a series of episodes. They're not all the same. Some are, you know, quick 20 minute uh, TED talk with, with just some reflection time. Some are Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a talking head. Um, some are, here's an idea, go into a breakout room. Um, some is completely a quiz on what you know or don't know. The idea here is do not think because I had an in-person event that was this hour, this hour, this hour, and this hour that I have to have those same blocks again. Be able to go a little bit outside the realm there. Um, and the, the other thing is I want you to think not about the, um, the format as that day. One of the things that we did, um, uh, with, with CAI and we're doing with wraps and we've done with, um, two other organizations is there's pre-read ahead of time. And we have some fun kind of quizzy polls on the beginning to check to see what they did. We use that content throughout. And so, Think about um, a polling and survey before and after. And I'm not talking about how was the event. I'm talking about um, what do you want to get out of this? And then what are you going to do with this, right? Pre-reading, I mentioned. Um, and then think about the day it starts at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. or whatever on Wednesday. How do I have them doing things with us ahead of time? Think about community discussions. How do I get people talking in online community before I even get to them? How do I get them to take that, take that outside? How do I, um, so with, with CAI, we really encourage folks to use the, the chat and do, and do individual chats, like on the chat. You know, you could, you could say that directly to me or you could send something just to Ann or to, um, or to um, I think Dan was on here earlier, right? Um, but you can also suggest that they do texting and they have a conversation. Um, learning circles, and I'm gonna, I want to talk a little bit more about this in another in another another time because I think this is a really critical part, and that's forming learning partnerships before an event, having that be a check-in during the event, and then finishing it. We've run the learning circles at, at ASAE's Great Ideas now for three years, and it's a phenomenal learning experience. It's outside the outside the 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 um, session room. Um, just suggest that you consider all of those different elements. All right, you've done all that work. Now put the agenda down. What I loved about the experience um, with uh, the recent with, with CAI, and and this actually happened also with the workshop that we did with community brands, um, the Bill Highway community brands and Mariner did. Um, after we decided what do we want them to learn, after we decided what kind of experience was going to help folks um, really, really take and, and absorb that information, after we did all of that, we then put in the agenda. So um, do not try to start with the agenda. Um, make sure you're, you're using those learning um, objectives. Make sure you're remembering the experience. Go ahead and block your times. Um, know your flow and then weave all the pieces together. Okay. All right, guys, I promised six things. 
kind of, kind of a set of sequences. Yeah, yeah, you wanna kind of deal with these things. Um, so we said content, right, drives everything, technology, content learning objectives, technology, back to the experience. Then you look at the format, then you create the wraparound, and then you put together the agenda. Now, why the wraparound before the agenda? Let me just explain something to you. One of the things, and I had this conversation with CAI, we've had it with wraps, is that we can't get everything in that. Remember I told you eight does not equal eight? We couldn't get it all in. So part of what we had to say to ourselves was, this is priority, this is priority, this is secondary, hold a second. This could be a pre-reading. So if you've sort of said to yourself, um, how can I wrap around the experience? It really opens you up to be able to create that agenda. All right. Okay, my CAI folks. Um, I know I saw Emily and Crystal. I don't, I don't know that I saw who else I saw. I'm going to ask, um, is it possible, um, uh, Sarah, and if it's not, tell me. And Ke Kelly is here. Good. I want to get you guys, I want to open up your lines, and I'm going to ask um, um, uh, Sarah to let me know if she can do that. I'm going to, I'm going to, just real quickly, I'm going to sort of offer up what I know about this from my own experience because I'm the cute one in the middle. Okay, there's two cute ones in the middle. And technically, if you turn it sideways, we're all cute. Um, <laughs> um, oh, they're saying I might be the host. Okay, so let me, let me see if I can do this. You know how this is, folks, right? Okay, so hang on a second. Um, uh, oops. How are we doing, folks? Okay. Something happened there. I'm gonna to go to the attendees and I'm gonna search for, so let me do this. We had a little bit of a change here. Crystal Wallace, okay, I'm gonna allow Crystal to talk. Crystal, can you talk? I can talk, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Emily Jennings, I'm gonna allow you to talk. Tell me if you can talk. Maybe Kelly not can yet. talk. Okay, sweet. And Karen? Okay. Do, it, it, Hi, Peggy. I'm here. Okay, great. Do we have, um, who, is, is that it or no? Kelly Kelly's is here, here too. Oh, Kelly is here. Good. Okay. I started to type her in and I didn't see it. Oh, uh, I think I came through as Emily. I think I overrode Emily. <laughs> oh, great. Great. So poor as a, Emily. As a, as a Emily. Tech, oh, I had as two Emily. tech person. <laughs> Oh, you know what? Okay, I had two Emilys, so let me open up the other Emilys. Let's see. Emily, can you talk now? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, awesome. <laughs> all right, guys. See, this is what is so fun is bringing you all on. And I know you guys are in the picture behind me too, and I don't know if you can find yourself or not, but you know, we'll, 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 we'll deal with that. All right, this is what I'm going to do. To the guys that are listening in, um, these people have an amazing story. I promised them because they're still in the middle of their amazing story that I would make this as easy as possible. So I asked them to come on, but I told them that I would set them up and allow us just to have a conversation. So I want to let you guys know that they took a, um, a full day conference that also had at their annual meeting the next day, some pop-up sessions. Basically, that's the kind of the format they took. They said, we got to pivot it to virtual. So it was still held on the same date, so there was no confusion. We turned it into a four-hour virtual with four uh, one-hour Zoom gatherings in the Tiki Lounge. Um, and um, we basically took the beach theme, because it's supposed to be in Florida, and just took it with the, with the, with the, with the um, uh, Tiki Lounge and all the follow-up sessions. So we had a couple of things that I think are worth besides are fun. Um, we had speaker virtual backgrounds. And then we invited all, listen to the me, we, I love to put we in this team, <laughs> um, invited attendees to have a beach theme as a background. So we had all kinds of really good beach themes and a couple of really good happy hour ones as well. The bright blue conference package, right? The wearables, by the way, can you just see this guys? Look at these, look at this, look at this, look at this. Are you jealous? Are you jealous? Yeah, look at that. That was all Kelly, by the way. Kelly, Kelly came up with those fun little gadgets. Kelly, I love you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then, of course, the scavenger hunt, which was pretty cool. But I thought, and, and I don't know, maybe I'm, over, maybe I'm over speaking this. I thought that the bingo card was the creme de la creme, right? So let me just show you this. So this is, um, I have one version of this. There, was a, there were two versions of this that went out. 
And um, they got them in that wonderful little package that was very tactile. And, um, you know, I'm going to stop right there. And I and um, one of you pipe in, tell me a little bit about the bingo card. How did it go? Um, so, Kelly, so, go ahead, yeah, Kelly. Yeah, so this is Kelly. Um, so all of these spots, they were rearranged differently. So everyone had a different card. And we wanted it to relate to both the virtual meeting itself. So hearing a dog park, seeing a child appear on the screen, but then also things that they were going to be learning throughout the day, um, such as how to engage members moving forward or getting a takeaway. So it's also personal. Um, we had two rounds of this. So it was the generic bingo of you have five in a row. Um, and then we also had it to fill up the card and we use the winners received um, a Amazon gift card for it. And we told them to text a picture of their card to my cell phone. So throughout the day, people were referencing things. Um, we had some competitive people that called in their co-workers, brought their dog on screen to bark. Um, so it was very interesting and it just brought a, a fun aspect to the virtual aspect or the virtual conference itself. Yes, and we also added a spot on that bingo card um, that they had to see our sponsor. So that was another way that we could fulfill our sponsor obligation as well. Cool. Very cool. I'm going to go back to this page. Um, I don't, I'm looking to see if there are questions coming in, but I, I, what I really want to just, I'd love you guys just to share what was your experience as a team putting this together? And then maybe because I know you've had the Tiki, the, the Tiki, the, yeah, this is the right <laughs> Tiki Lounge. Just tell us anything about those that you think would be a good add on because I think that you have done the wraparound experience so amazingly. Well, we had our first, this is Karen. Hi, everybody. We did our first Tiki Lounge session uh, yesterday, and we were a little nervous. We didn't know how many we would get. This was open to our chapter executive directors, presidents, and presidents elect. And we got 60 folks to attend, which is probably triple what we would have gotten in our CAI chapter leader lounge on site. So we were thrilled with that. Some of them even... Uh, had on their, have their um, beach background. And so we were thrilled with that. And the overall uh, experience I know with my team was really uh, very rewarding. We each had our own special skill set and we divided and conquer. It's, it, this is not something that you can do alone. Um, it takes uh, a team effort to do it. Uh, can I add on to that a little bit, Peggy? Please. Uh, this is Crystal Wallace. Hi, everybody. Um, one thing I think going into this that my fear, and probably more so than the rest of my team, was, oh my gosh, this is a really long time to ask people to stay in front of the computer. But what I learned is with working with everybody on the team and their different skill sets, and Peggy, who is amazing and awesome, as you all know, um, as our facilitator, we came up with all these cool ideas and we didn't say, you know, we just have to stop at one. We said, let's add on as many cool things as we can, not only to keep them engaged, but also to teach them how to do it themselves. So that was really cool. And at the end, I kept watching the number of people and we had for the full day event, um, we had the possibility to have 128 people and we had 108 when we started at the end of the day, we still had in the upper eighties, which is more than we would have had on site. And I was, we were kept getting comments of, oh my gosh, this went by so quickly. Thank you so much. So it really, it was very, um, it was very eye opening to see, because I hear a lot of people in the, probably in this room say, oh my gosh, we can't do a full day event. You can, you just have to make it super interactive. Cool beans, awesome. Anything else from the team? Have fun, make it fun for your attendees. Market it ahead of time, like we did with the swag envelope, get them excited. Um, and that really, really paid off because they had all their, their swag with them. And I think they were also very appreciative. They knew because we sort of had that Zoom webinar how-to with them beforehand, they were comfortable with Zoom. So they could, that hurdle we got over early on and they could really fully enjoy the day. Sweet. 
So there is a question here, and I don't want to put you guys on the spot, but clearly I am. Someone has said, is there a run of show for the full day of the content? Would you be willing to share your template? And there's been a couple of other questions related to that. Oh, Chris has already said, happy to share. Yep. I think that I, what I love about this team that I had the pleasure of working with this time is that they, they, they reach to the community for ideas, they test those ideas, they try them, and they send those ideas back out again. They were willing in the throes of all the work that they're doing to pop on today to have this conversation, and I just think it's really great. Someone said, to elaborate on the scavenger hunt, um, the, um, do you guys want me to take that, or do you, one of you want to talk, take it? Why don't you go ahead, Peggy? It was your, that was your brainchild, so why don't you go ahead and talk about it? <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> so essentially, the really cool thing is that part of the content we wanted to do was to help people make this transition of what do they need to think about, know about, and act about differently in, as a leadership in a time of change. Because it's, we had the pandemic, we've had um, all of the, the, the politics and the protests, and we know we're going to have more of everything going in for the rest of the year. So un, appreci don't try to remake your leadership style, but appreciate your leadership style, figure out what are the strengths and then figure out how you can work with the strengths of other folks around you is in essence. So we wanted to focus on what is your leadership style and what is your, um, and what, and what is the strength? And so the catalyst was a pre-read um, and then reminded them what they had read, asked them a couple of polls to see what, to, to make sure that they had some understanding of this. And then gave them um, about six minutes. We said, run around your house. You've identified your leadership style. Run around your house. Find something that represents it. Find something that represents someone else. Bring it back in. And um, we gave them the time. And we stayed on, we stayed on um, just talking through that six minutes so people could ask questions. And as they came in, we got rid of the slides. So when they came back in again and we were populating the whole screen, we were asking people to have their item in, in front of them. And then we did a chat and then we sent them to the breakout rooms. So it, the, the thing, and I've done the scavenger hunt a, a couple of times, the thing that I would say to you is make the question or the ask super simple and make it really broad so that it's really super easy for them to, um, to be able to answer it. And um, if you, add this to a reading or a learning what you're doing is you're getting people to 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 own that uh, that, that that learning or that understanding and we also used it as a way to get them up as a break Peggy, one to, one oh, i'm sorry go ahead kelly no i was gonna say just to go on top of that too um we were trying to figure out an icebreaker with that many people we knew that they couldn't really introduce themselves to each other. And so we push them into the breakout rooms right away after that um, to introduce the item that they had. And that was the same group that we kept them with all day, almost like sitting at a banquet round table. Mm -hmm. And we kept those sessions small of 10 or less people. So it would be like sitting at that banquet round in person, but that was a way for them to introduce themselves to. And get that, that conversation flowing and going and that interaction taking place. One final comment that I'd like to make, Peggy, is that on the screen, the gentleman in the bottom right corner is our CEO. Um, so I just wanted to share that his support was um, part of this as well. He gave us, you know, full on, do what you need to do to, to get it done and obviously was, was supportive of our efforts. So I just wanna to give Tom kudos for, for that as well. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm going to, I know we need to kind of move, but I want to ask um, uh, Kelly, just one other thing, because you did, you mentioned, um, you know, using the Zoom rooms and you pre-assigned folks and kept them in those rooms. So, um, and I don't want to go into technical stuff, but I think people will have questions about, you know, do I do the random or do I do um, the pre-assigned? And can you in like, um, you know, 30 seconds give any advice? Yeah, the, the pre-assigned worked great in the way that we had the ability to make sure certain people were with each other and certain people were not with each other, um, just knowing the personality of our group. Um, we did push them into random later on. You can um, 
within Zoom, you have the ability to go back and forth or move people around. So definitely think about that. Um, on the webinar that we did yesterday in our Tiki Lounge, um, we did not pre-assign, but last minute decided that we wanted to group our chapters by the a specific size that they are. And so I was able to do that during the first couple minutes of the, the webinar while things were getting started. So when we pushed them into the breakout rooms, they were with a specific group of people. Um, so you do have that ability. So I would definitely look into that and feel free. I'll put my email address into the chat that if you have questions about that to definitely reach out and I can talk through kind of things that we did. Great. Awesome. Thank you, guys. It's so sweet to have you on here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Peggy. We, we couldn't have done it without you. We really appreciate your support as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there, I saw somebody had asked this question of what's the difference between um, uh, Q&A and chat? And then we have someone else who's asked about global audiences. Um, the difference between Q&A and chat is that, um, well, in the way we set it up, you can chat to everybody. It's a free chat. I can chat to you. You can chat to me. Some people limit the Q&A to the chat just because then some, the audience can, has a better opportunity of also answering the chat. Um, the Q&A is more static. So if you go up on, the, on your menu bar and click Q&A, you can see the Q&A. The nice thing about the Q&A is it stores all the questions in one place. In addition to store, storing all of the um, questions in one place, is it, it allows other folks to answer it. It allows you to indicate something has been answered or not answered. Um, and um, it just, it, it, it streamlines the Q&A process. It's really important if you have a presenter who cannot, um, can, doesn't like to be interrupted during it because it does give you the opportunity to throw some Q&As in there. One of the interesting things, and I'm going to go to the Q&A right now because Susan has asked, does anyone online have had to manage a global audience and how have you accommodated it? And um, I'm going to ask people in the chat to go ahead and fill in it, fill in it after you've had. And I will say that um, that they, uh, the one that we're doing at the end of the month with wraps is going to have a global audience. One of the things that we have done is be very com uh, very conscious of the fact that we're gonna be meeting them at a different time of the day than, than may be um, useful for them. So we are making a conscious effort to make sure that we are videotaping and we have the pre-reading and, and we're organizing the day so that they can come and go. So. One of the things I would recommend is that you, um, there's a, there was a piece that I recently read about the global audiences. Susan, if you will throw your email and you can just send it to me personally in the chat, I will make sure I send you the link to that particular um, the great question. Did I see a hand raised as well? Let me go to my participants. Looks like um, I got one hand rose, raised and um, And define is it emerald? Let's see. Okay, hang on one second, guys. Okay, Michelle Lowry. Go ahead, Michelle. Michelle. All right, we'll throw that into the chat and we will take care of that. Okay. Um, awesome. I would love to bring on, this has been a great conversation, but I have a few minutes left and I wanted to be able to bring on, um, if Karen is still with us, oops, C-A-R-E-N, Karen um, Keel from IIDA. Are you with us, uh, Karen? I'm here. Hi. Awesome. Delighted to see you. What I wanted to share, um, I'm just super excited about how your example is um, way different and in some cases really beautifully scalable for what you had to do. I know that you, you, know, you have two pieces to it. it. The huge part of it that you and I talked about was the one and a half day in person and that you've shifted it to this ongoing and that basically you have a field study series and a live chat series that the live chats were, you know, they're 45 minute Zoom meetings for presidents and president-elects, very informal. You've had some panels and content led by the leaders, kind of of the moment topics. But the field guide is a nice balance to that because it targeted all the board members. It's more formal, it's a webinar. 
Um, and it's more of a kind of a classroom expert panel format and moderator. So the neat thing is, is that it offers um, really a, a kind of a more formal against this, this informal piece of it. And what, what I love about this is that rather than saying we're going to try to recreate or just or pivot a one day conference and just kind of, you know, uh, move it over there. What we were able, to, what you did was you said, no, let's attack this in two different spaces. So, um, and I really love it. And you also have some great, um, strong visuals to help you kind of tell this story. So, Karen, um, anything that, you know, what would you share, lesson learned or ahas in the process? And I know it's kind of ongoing, but what have you learned that you would share? I guess what I would share with everybody is that um, it's uh, our chapter leaders have liked the way that we broke it up into digestible pieces for them. So if they miss one, we do have the recordings available. Um, we do them later in the day so that they can join um, at the end of their work day. Um, hopefully, uh, we also, rather than doing them in the morning, we realize people are probably more tired towards the end of the day, but they might have a little bit more flexibility in their schedule at that time. Um, and we, we do record them and leave them on our Dropbox so people can catch up. But also, if they miss one, they can catch up with the next one, and they haven't, it's not a series where it's um, buildable so that they, they can still participate. Um, uh, and they have responded really well and they love connecting with each other and the live chats particularly really let them talk to each other with those we make sure that they are led by panels of chapter leaders so I'm the moderator but I basically um, introduce uh, three or four different chapter presidents um, and then kind of get out of the way so that they can talk to each other and then um, I'm the one who would moderate the chat and throw out questions, but we also open it up so that all of the chapter leaders can really get into discussion. And it really helps connect them from across the country um, much better than um, other opportunities we've been able to try to figure out for them from home. So it's that, that's what I would do. It's just, we, we do use the breakout rooms. Um, and those are great too. Uh, I haven't been in all of the breakout rooms, obviously, because you only be play one place at a time. But uh, uh, as far as like um, um, making sure that everybody has a chance to communicate, get together, and um, share ideas, the, the live chat format and keeping it shorter has been nice. Yeah, I love the fact when we talked about the fact that it's 45 minutes. So it's sometimes, you know, you're, you're, you're like, oh, can I, that hour will, blah, blah. but 45 minutes, I was like, yeah, I'll be done. This is good. I can jump on there. And, and also it's from a content perspective, it's both easier and harder. You have to sort of call down to what can fit in 45 minutes, but the other hand, you only have 45 minutes. So it's kind of, it's, it doesn't feel as threatening. <laughs> Great. Yes. Any, yes. Yeah. It's not a big commitment. Yeah. Um, for the attending. Yeah, so we have we have just hit 1 p.m. So um, I, 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 but I, what I want to do is be conscious of the folks that have to get off. Um, I want to share with you um, just real quickly a um, few slides here, and then I'll wrap it up. But but let but if you have questions, get them in the chat, and we will continue to. Um, continue to chat and be able as, um, as, um, as we can to continue to answer the questions. Um, I'm just gonna mention this because what I love what AFP did was, this was the piece I said about piecing platforms together. You know, go with what you know, but adding things like Twitter or Slido or morning chats, the Zoom to the conferencing app. And I just really love the fact that they said, that they got Freeman was the home base and helped them through. So there is not a no cost to this. Um, lastly, I just wanna bring in the fact that at the end of the day, someone said it, CAI said it, someone said it in the chat, um, 
and I think Karen just actually repeated it, this notion of these are all opportunities for you to coach your own chapters, right? These are all opportunities for you to show them what to do, how to do it, get them trained. So maybe what we do right now is we live by the word beta and we say to folks, come on, we're gonna learn this together. And when we learn this together, it will make you better, more effective. You will double the engagement. Over and over again, we have heard folks say that, and I know with PRSA Maryland and with MRN and the three groups that we manage, we've seen members we haven't seen before because we've taken away the travel process. So let's, let's meet those people. Now here, can I have some drum roll or maybe my clapper? You want to experience this? Welcome, CEX 2020 is virtual. That's right, guys. You want to put on your calendar 26th, 27th at your home, at your office, wherever you're comfy. New, new cool price. We're going, we're going to take all of these things together. We're going to have a new platform. We're going to have all kinds of cool things. Guys, guys, sign up today. All right. Still have a couple of spots in our experience squad. Ping us if you want. Um, and a little more somber note. Um, we have been talking about the pandemics, about the protests, about the politics. And um, I just want to mention to you guys that um, our action item here at Mariner and Bill Highway is to help our chapters address this. Join us Monday, June 29th for a virtual idea swap on chapters and the diversity, equity, and inclusion conversation. This is not about answers. This is about conversation and helping all of us help our chapters. So just so that it's not too somber, I'm going to go back to this slide. I'm going to ask you guys, what, what, what? Did we give you anything that you can take away? Put it in the chat. Get on to where you have to go. Um, tell us what we can do for you. We are here for you, right? We are here for you, um, seriously. And um, you're going to get all of this. And I want to do another last shout out to Community Brands. Thank you for being a partner in all of this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. See you on the 29th. See you next month. Bye now.